this is Stevie Rochelle from Top End Metal Sludge, your favorite website. You are locked and loaded on the Music Mania podcast. Get ready for some screaming heavy metal! We rock! But the evil that men do lives on. We gonna bang your You are now listening to the Music Mania Podcast, brought to you by CD Warehouse in Gladstone, the number one hard rock podcast in the Midwest, featuring hard-hitting interviews with rock's living legends. And now, here is your host, Clint Schweitzer. Welcome to the first February show of 2019 here on the Music Mania Podcast. I'm your host, Clint Schweitzer. Guys, on this show, you already know the songs, and on this show, we're going to tell you the stories, and that's exactly what we have for you uh, on this episode. Guys, so excited to welcome a very special guest to this show, someone that means a lot to me, an artist that I have revered for many years now. It is Lisa Loeb. Yes, the Dallas native. She is a 2018 Grammy Award winning singer songwriter, touring musician, and philanthropist who started her career with the platinum selling number one hit song, Stay, from the film Reality Bites. A trailblazing independent artist, Lisa was the first pop musician to have a number one single while not signed to a recording contract. She followed that remarkable feat with several hit songs and six albums, two of which were certified gold. Guys, she has her own line of eyewear. She is revered. She has been in, in film and television as an actress. Just such a huge fan of Lisa's. I remember where I was to this day when I first heard the song Stay, a song that stuck with me over the years. I've just always been such a fan of that video, uh, her look, uh, just the way she's always seemed like such a, such a wonderful down-to-earth person. She's um, done children's albums, and she is on tour. She's got some dates coming up here, and she's going to be in Overland Park, Kansas, this weekend on Saturday night, guys, February 2nd, Saturday night at Johnson Co- County Community College. That's at Yardley Hall. She has, a, she has a show. It's an adult show. And then earlier that day, she has a show at 2 p.m. at uh, Polsky Theater that's for children. She has written and recorded several children's albums. She is just one of those individuals that's been out there doing it all. Very, like I said, just has that image and that look to her that back in the day, you know, whenever you talk about kind of a cute, quirky girl that had glasses, you'd always say that she's a Lisa Loeb type. And we're just so grateful to have Lisa on here, especially because, you know, on this show, you know, granted, a lot of it, you know, 80% of it is focused on, you know, hard rock artists from the, the 70s and 80s. Uh, but we like to go and we like to do other things. We like to span a lot of different genres and a lot of different eras. And this is a very important era for me as I was about 10 years old when I started to, to hear about Lisa Loeb and, and her song Stay, which catapulted her career, you know, before she even had one. And I remember where I was. I remember I was on my way to, to play golf. I was taking golf lessons with my best friend. Uh, in the summer of 94, and I, I remember hearing that song in the car on the way there. We had just had a new alternative station uh, that was brand new where I grew up in Missouri, uh, kind of outside of Kansas City, and I heard this song, and I was just immediately just infectious, and I think that's the way a lot of people felt, and the way a lot of people felt about Lisa, and she went on to have just a tremendous career, Grammy Award winning, and um, the, the work she does with children and children's albums is so good. She's contributed to an Ozzy Osbourne tribute album, she was just recently uh, at NAM, which is an awesome convention showcasing uh, a lot of different uh, brands of, of guitars and, and guitar um, equipment and things like of, of that nature. And so Lisa, she's just one of those people that's, that she's done it all. And I'm so appreciative to be able to talk to her because she doesn't necessarily fit the mold of a guest that we have on this show all the time. But man, I'm so excited about this one. I'm going to be seeing her uh, February 2nd here in Overland Park. Guys, if you're in this area, if you're a Kansas City area, Listener, we just hope that you'll go and, and support this. And if you have a if you have a little one, take her, take the, him or her to uh, her children's show, which is at two o'clock at the same venue uh, in the Carlson Center. It's at one two three four five College Boulevard in Overland Park. 
Um, Lisa's got uh, some other shows booked so far this uh, winter and spring. Go to her website, lisaloeb.com. You can get the uh, information on that. She's got, a sh- uh, of course, the two shows, February 2nd in uh, Overland Park, and then a couple shows out- coming up in March in Louisville, Texas, before she goes to Boston, Philadelphia, Annapolis, and finally Washington, D.C., and we'll see what else she has in the fold coming up here in 2019. I'll tell you what, things are obviously heating up quite a bit for us here on the Music Mania podcast, and it's only February. Um, Just in the last week, you know, I've been to, uh, you know, counting the Lisa Loeb show uh, this weekend. This will be my fourth show in just over a week's time. I saw the Jim Blossoms last Friday night. You can catch my review of that along with my interview with singer Robin Wilson on our website, musicmaniapodcast.com. Of course, you can always press the subscribe button on iTunes or Google Play. If you have a smartphone, guys, you've got this show. You could check out all of our archives. I think over 115 shows now. Uh, very excited about that. And then uh, last Sunday night, uh, excuse me, Saturday night in uh, Durant, Oklahoma, I saw the Scorpions. This is my third time seeing them in about a year and a half. Uh, it was just kind of a one-off show for them at this fabulous venue, uh, which is the Choctaw Casino. The Grand Theater is, is about a 5,000-seat theater there, and it's just a perfect, there's not a bad seat in the house. It was awesome. The, the energy was electric. The crowd was rabid. And seeing the Scorpions, you know, with members like Klaus Mine. Rudolf Schenker in their 70s, or they're both 70 years old now. It's unbelievable the energy that they're still putting off uh, out there on stage. And just a tremendous night uh, to see them again. I'm just one of my favorite bands of all time. And then just uh, earlier last week, I saw Tommy James. Tommy James and the Shondells. Tommy just been on this show twice to be able to go see him at the Prairie Band Casino here outside of Topeka. Made the drive on a weeknight to go check out Tommy for the first time. And I'm just such a fan. You know, we've uh, I've saw... Uh, Herman's Hermits, Peter Noon, uh, last summer, and now to see Tommy James, two of my favorites from the 60s, again, on this show. We like to span a lot of genres and a lot of different uh, eras. I'm such a huge fan of of that early golden era of rock and roll from Dion and the Belmonts, Elvis, of course, uh, you know, Herman's Hermits, Tommy James. So this Lisa Loeb show will be my fourth show in a week. That's what we do here. It's going to be heating up. Summer concert season is uh, going to be upon us before you know it. So a lot of big things coming up here on the podcast. A lot of big interviews coming up and reviews. Like I said, I review everything that uh, that I do. Musicmaniapodcast.com. And guys, before we get to our interview with Lisa Loeb, got to tell you about our sponsor, CD Warehouse in Gladstone, Missouri. Guys, for over 22 years, a staple of the Northland. They buy, sell, and trade CDs, DVDs, vinyl, and more. Give them a call at 816. 816- 6455-2130 or give them a visit at 2504 Northeast 57th Terrace in Gladstone. Guys, do not let the vibe of the old school record store go by the wayside. Go in and give a visit to CD Warehouse. Owner Randy Ringer. Tell them Music Mania sent you and there will be a discount or it's on us. Okay, awesome. Well, you know what? Um, just on a personal note, we can't thank you enough for joining us, Lisa. This is just such a, such a pleasure to have you on. I hope everything is doing well and we're going to have you here. Um, we're in Kansas City, so we're going to have you here in Overland Park this weekend. Very excited about that, about having you here. I'm so excited, too. You know, I it's a really special day because I get to do a family show earlier in the day and a grown-up show at night. So so excited to have that, you know, opportunity to connect with a lot of the community. It's going to be great. I'm going to be at the grown-up show. I don't have any kids, so I think what you do is just tremendous. I mean, let, let's talk about that a little bit because what you've done kind of in the in the children's realm with regards to the the albums you've recorded and you do these kind of special children's shows uh, on the day of that you do um you know uh, normal shows as well just talk about where where the passion for that came i mean obviously you have children of your own is is that kind of what what brought all this on not really i started making kids music before i was even close to having kids i think it was more of my nostalgia for my own youth and the kind of music and entertainment that i loved when i was growing up like the Muppets and the old Sesame Street, and then a lot of grown-up programming that the kids used to watch back then. You know, like uh, all the all the variety shows of the 1970s, like Donnie and Marie and the Carol Burnett Show, and comedians like Steve Martin and Fernwood Tonight. And there was a lot of stuff that kids would watch, and it had a great sense of humor and silliness and heart and seriousness and storytelling, and I wanted to do things like that. Um, I think once I had kids, but especially when they were babies, it inspired me to do the nursery rhymes record. I didn't understand the importance of nursery rhymes until I started playing kids shows and until I had kids of my own. But, um, it's just, a, it, for me, it's a fun way to, to express myself creatively and tell stories 
um, it's not even necessarily the music that my kids listen to, actually. <laughs> well, I, I think it's great because, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of the, I went and checked out the Camp Lisa album, which I love because it kind of reminds me, I think we had kind of similar upbringing, similar childhoods, and that brings me back too because I was like a summer summer camper. I grew up watching Friday the 13th and Sleepaway Camp. And I was like, I've got to experience oh, right. In some way or another. So uh, hearing that album was awesome because it's you've got a lot of like kind of standard camp songs. It just kind of brings me back. And I, you talked about also and previously that you grew up going to a lot of summer camps. And you have a, a program called Camp Lisa where you help send others to summer camp. So you're obviously very connected to, to the world of summer camping. Yeah, I am. You know, it's, it's less camping and more camp. And um, like you said, I, I did the same thing. We did a lot of classic songs on, on my Camp Lisa record. And can continue that tradition through a lot of my kids' records. Songs that are really, you know, if you have that experience when you were a kid, when you hear what, some of those songs, and some of them might be, you know, pretty funny and silly, but you still connect with them as a grown-up. And specifically on the Camp Lisa record, there are songs about things that happen at camp, like making friends, meeting people for the first time, waking up in the morning, all these things that, it, it's funny, they're, they, they actually ended up inspiring a summer camp musical that I, I made with my collaborators that we performed, we did off Broadway in New York. We didn't, but I mean, a, a company of actors performed um, performed the musical off Broadway. Because I think a lot of people connect with that. And once you're connected, you're sort of connected for the rest of your life. Uh, there's no question about it. And, and Lisa, you've done so many things in your career. You're, I mean, you're a true philanthropist, a, a true artist in every sense. And I think you're kind of represent what's, what's right about about music and, and about art in general. I mean, you've been in shows like Gossip Girl. You've been in movies like, uh, you know, Fright Night, Hot Tub Time Machine 2. I mean, as a, as a, as a musician, as an artist, it, where, where does the, the satisfaction come into you more? When you're, when you're on stage, when you're recording, or, or when you're, uh, you know, making appearances in some of these movies or shows? Um, I think my favorite is playing concerts. Um, but I also really enjoy writing. It's really, it's really like uh, magical when you get to write. You know, you start off with, with uh, some people in a room or yourself in a room and an instrument. And um, it's like you create something from nothing. It's the craziest kind of magic that you can imagine. Um, but it is really fun, too. There is something really special and unique to performing live and connecting with audiences um, in that way. Well. One thing I'll never forget is, um, you know, I, I've always been so connected to uh, your, your hit song, Stay. It's, it's something that I remember the first time that I heard it. It's one of those songs. I think that's really special when you have music like that. Obviously, uh, the video and, and your look was a big part of that. And you have actually your own line of uh, at least a low buy wear. Uh, kind of talk about that, how that came about. And I think this is just awesome because it's, it was such a you know, signature for your look, obviously, all these years. Yeah, it took me many, many years finally to completely embrace the focus on the glasses. It's funny, when I first started out and people would ask me about my glasses, instead of my music, you know, I was a young gal, I was in my early 20s, and I'm like, no, you don't understand, I'm a serious musician, which I still am. You know, I work really hard on my guitar playing and my songwriting and the craft, and they want to ask me about my glasses, what? Um, but then I started looking around at some of my favorite musicians, including David Bowie and Elton John and Queen, and Zeppelin, and they definitely have these signature styles. It's just, that's part of the way they express themselves. That's part of the way they entertain, and just, you know, that's what they that's what they like. And I'm the same way, even though my, my style might not be quite over the top like that. Um, I do have a style that I enjoy developing, <laughs> and it doesn't take away from the music, but it definitely makes me more, more recognizable. And because of that, I get stopped a lot for my glasses, and so many women and young women... Um, and women my age and, uh, you know, people your age, they stop me and they say that they feel comfortable wearing their glasses because they saw me wearing my glasses on TV and, you know, in music videos and everything. And it made, it, it seemed like it really made people feel comfortable and feel self-confident. Um, so that was kind of a clue that was like, you know what, I should develop an eyewear line so that I can um, make more frames that look good on all different people, different faces, different shapes, different colors, um, you know, both people and glasses. And well, create a line that's inspired by my look. And yeah. um, they sell them at mom and pop ophthalmologist and opticians offices in their stores, as well as at Costco now. They also have some. And they have kids frames for girls as well. So it's just been really great to connect with people, to make them feel proud and, and pretty and, you know, cool with their glasses. But also it's just uh, it's, it's a big interest of mine and it's a hobby of mine. 
Well, you know, the, the glasses, the love of glasses, not the sound sure. of the glasses. Oh, sure. No, yeah, absolutely. It's funny because like growing up, um, it's like you almost became this like proper pronoun for people, you know, that, that kind of the, the cute quirky girl with glasses would be like, you, that's like a Lisa Loeb type. Like I'm right. sure you had a lot, like it's just, there was like, you should date a, a Lisa Loeb type. And, uh, right. I, I was yeah, no, cool I totally, that. it's so funny. I was just at a, a music, a big music trade show and lost in Anaheim called NAM. And it's all the people who make all the instruments and manufacture the instruments and people who are kind of behind them behind the scenes in the music business, you know, people who make the sheet music and all the people who attend it, it's funny, they're all the kind of rock and roll people. So you walk by a person and, you, and, and normally you're around just a couple of those. There might be a couple who work in an office or, you know, one that you might see at the drugstore, but you don't, so, so every time you see a person who you think might be like-minded based on their style or their look, you see them and you're like, oh yeah, that could be, that's somebody I might want to know. Oh, there's another one. But it's funny when you're at a show, a show, um, a trade show like Nam, where every single person is the rock person. Um, in all the different forms and fashions, uh, I know I know what that feeling is like. I saw you. I, you you're so wonderful. To, you're always um, posting on 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 Instagram and on on doing Facebook lives, interacting with fans. And I saw you were at Nam, and it's funny we had so many of our uh, you know we we because this is like so primarily a hard rock show. We had you know just had a lot of uh, some members from Last in Line that were that were they were all at Nam and mm -hmm. and I saw you there. and I was like that is so perfect. That just does really show what. What a musician's musician you are! An amazing singer songwriter. You really you span span you know many genres and many you know many types of music. I think that's great, and I think that that's tremendous. You were at Nam. You've been there a few times though. You've you've kind of made the rounds. I've been there for years. I've yeah. been I go to Nam for the last twenty years. I mean, I there, I just I love seeing the people who manufacture my guitar strings, my guitars. Uh, you know, um, I used to work a lot with Fender. I mean, sorry, with PV guitars, but I've also worked with Fender and Gibson and Taylor guitars and Yamaha and people who make my capos and Ernie Ball strings and guitars and you name it. It's just so exciting to be able to meet all these people that I admired from afar when I was growing up as a kid going to the music store in Dallas, you know? Well, obviously, Lisa, we, we've got you uh, coming in here at, uh, to Overland Park, Kansas here this weekend. We're so excited about that. Uh, LisaLoeb.com. You can get all the tour dates. you got some, you got some dates coming up still here this week. Uh, winter and spring and then um as i understand it, you've got a, a um a cover coming out of david bowie's all the young dudes you talked about being a fan and that's coming out soon yeah it's coming out on valentine's day and i think there's an opportunity to win some handwritten lyrics and a stay t-shirt if you check out my facebook live on wednesday i'll be talking about it but um but yeah i, I covered all the young dudes for a howard stern compilation actually and so it's going to come out. it was exclusive to howard stern you could only listen to it on his show so now it's coming out you know everywhere you could listen to it so I'm, I'm really excited to spread that i'm such a huge bowie fan so to start covering some of his songs i recently played moon age daydream which is another bowie song with um taylor from uh the from the foo fighters and um with his band and it's just so fun to to totally get to play the music that i loved growing up you kind of delve into a lot of realms i mean i remember when you did the uh, goodbye to romance cover ozzy osbourne of course he's out on his oh Wars. yeah Sure. How, how, <laughs> how much do you delve into into the hard rock genre? Because obviously you you know you have a, a style, but you obviously you yes. kind of you kind of go a lot of different directions. Are you are you a big fan? Yeah. Of you know, as a guitar player growing up, um, I, I think things weren't quite as much as, as subdivided as they are now. But I was just so obsessed with like Zeppelin and Hendrix and uh, again like Bowie, some of these other groups and, and a lot of new wave music and. Um, I just loved all that so much. And so I still just really connect to it. I, I connect, I have this like love of guitar in my heart. And, um, you know, I, I met a lot of heavy metal players and rock players uh, through the years. Everyone from, I don't know, uh, Steve Morris, Steve Vai, Steve, all the Steves, Steve <laughs> Lukather. Um, I, I just, I meet all kinds of bands because really we're, we're all musicians, even though I might come off as like a, a quiet singer songwriter um i love guitar so um so I'm, I'm always connecting you know whether it's the guys from mastodon or <laughs> uh you know it, it just it really runs the gamut musicians really connect you know so um so i i i love rock and i love i would say less metal although i appreciate metal um i i love i love a great guitar tone and i love the energy behind it you know well, it's not my personal mission to make sure that you someday tour with Mastodon. I'm I'm on it right now. Right. 
I think there's some pictures. <laughs> that's so funny. Before, Grammys, before let you know. Oh, that's uh, yes, Grammy Awards w winner, of course, Lisa. You are from from last year, and what a what an honor that is. Before we let you go, I've I've got to real quickly take you back to to 1994 because obviously we talked about um, me remembering exactly where I was when I when I first heard Stay, and I remember the the the. Uh, the, the station that, that had just formed and just the song came out, it just kind of changed everything. For me, it was like help my foundation of music was started with that with that song really. I still sing it every word to this day. But uh, uh, a lot of listeners may not realize, Lisa, that you didn't have a record deal at that time. You were an independent artist, maybe the first to have a number one song without a record deal. I mean, that's not very common. And just kind of like, how did your life change at that time? And it must have been a whirlwind. It must have been just a crazy whirlwind for you then. Yeah, you know, it was a per it was perfect timing because I'd been working so hard to be a professional musician. In my mind, I think since I was in high school, I started writing when I was a little kid and I was playing my own music by the time I was in high school, you know, at, at talent shows and clubs in town in Dallas where I grew up. And then definitely through, all through college making cassette tapes and <coughs> selling those. And then a couple of years after I graduated from college, I was living in New York and that's when the song Stay got on the Reality Bite soundtrack. So I had a very smart attorney, even though there were some record companies involved and in, um, interested in signing me, we ended up keeping the rights to the song Stay. And um, so I, I was an independent artist, even though the song was on the soundtrack. And I think that set me off in the right direction because I've always been very independent and strong headed when it comes to how I hear my music. I love working with collaborators. Um, but I definitely have to be a big part of what I'm doing. That's just I, I, I have this, an idea in my head, and um, and I love working with other people who can we can work together to try out things. But that you know it was a whirlwind for the song to shoot to number one, and it was great to have so many close friends and family for you know whole that I've had in my whole life next to me, so that you know it's fun to share that with other people when you're when you're on your own. I mean, at the same time the song was becoming so popular, I was in the middle of recording my album. Um, and touring, and signing a record deal, and doing all these business deals, and just doing a, a lot, which continued for the rest of my life. But um, at the time, that was there was so much going on that it was so great to have friends and family around to to also be able to take a step back and appreciate what was going on. And now, even especially now, looking back, and it's been like twenty five years, um, it really was a new, an unusual situation. You know, my friend Ethan Hawke um, passed the song along to Ben Stiller, yeah. who put the song on the album in the movie Reality Bites as well as on the album. And it seemed natural at the time, like, oh, i got a friend. He's an actor. He's, they're going to get a song in a movie. That doesn't happen. It's very rare that that actually happens. Um, and I really do appreciate it. And because that song was made in an independent space, kind of the way I wanted to and the way I, it was with my band and my collaborators at the time, uh, it set me up for being able to continue to make music the way I want to make music, whether I'm working with a major label or a small label or just distributing my music directly. Uh, you know, you hear it on Sirius XM or you hear it on the radio or you're able to get it through the, through the internet on, you know, all the different ways we get music. But it just set me up for making music the way I feel most comfortable, which is independently and with great collaborators. Well, no doubt about it, and Lisa, you're you're just an artist in every sense of the word. And I mean, we've we've had members from we just had Bruce Kulick from Kiss on last week. Members of Monday oh my gosh, Kulik. Bruce Kulick's br um, brother Bob, yeah, Bob was the one who put together those records where we covered um, the Aussie song and we covered a share song. And we did a bunch of other stuff. That's right. And through those guys, I I I those those guys are very nice. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, he plays with Kiss. I know it's crazy. Yeah. Well, you know that. That's kind of my foundation of music, and like, to, but to be honest, you know, to have, I mean, we're backstage at, at events like Rocklahoma and some of the big rock festivals, but to the, the, a real treat to be able to to speak with you and to talk with you because whereas that stuff is such a part of my past, so so are you, and so is uh, everything you've done. I'm such a huge fan of of the Firecracker album and of Cake and Pie and everything that you've done. You're and uh, I, I'm I love the, the Twister soundtracks, one of my favorites of all time, and how. Oh wow. Oh, I love that. So. Maybe I'll have to play that for you at the show. You know, I pl I do play when I play concerts. I play a lot of songs from all my albums. For yeah. me, I, you know, it feels just as current playing something from Firecracker or my first album, Tales, as it does playing songs that I've been writing now for my new album that'll be coming out. And, you know, songs I've written through all the years. I, I really love playing requests that fans have from... Uh, the different albums, because I know what it's like to be in the audience and to, to be thinking about that one song that I really love from the album from when I was a kid, and I want to hear that. And um, and so as as a performer, I, I definitely appreciate that. 
Well, we're, we're so looking forward to it. Um, it's at Johnson County Community College at uh, Yardley Hall. It, um, it's uh, Saturday night at 8 o'clock and uh, earlier in the day at 2 o'clock. If you have uh, children, be sure to bring them to the 2 o'clock show. Lisa's just going to be hanging out in Overland Park uh, on Sunday or on, uh, on Saturday. So we're excited to have you, Lisa. Thank you so much. It's a true pleasure, and we will see you on Saturday. Thank you. I look forward to it. I you bet. It. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks. And if at all possible, I am more of a fan of Lisa's than I was before doing the interview. What a down-to-earth, wonderful person to, to spend the time with us to, to talk about her career and the things she has coming up. I'm so excited to, to see her live on February 2nd. That's just coming up this weekend, guys. February 2nd, Saturday night in Overland Park. Go to her website, lisaloeb.com. You can get all the information on uh, her albums and her tour dates. Uh, go catch her. She just still looks exactly like she did in 1994. It's unbelievable. She was 25 years old then. Uh, she she looks about just the exact same. She still has the signature eyewear, which, uh, of course, she does have her own line of eyewear, and we were able to talk to her about that. Just a pleasure personally for me because, you know, in the in the early 90s, I was still formulating, you know, what I loved about music, and obviously I grew up a huge fan of hard rock music. That's my foundation. I grew up, you know, with my uncle showing me his Kiss records in my grandparents' basement, I was hooked from the beginning. I loved hard rock music, I, I, but I tried to take in everything I could on MTV and on the radio. So in the early 90s, obviously things were changing and grunge was a big deal. But in the alternative realm, I really flocked more to bands like Jim Blossoms. I loved Lisa Loeb, love everything she stood for. That song, Stay, it still resonates with me to this day. If that's on the radio, it's one of those songs you just sing along to no matter what. Every time you hear it on the radio, it's still one of those songs that sticks with you. And she has so many other tremendous songs like I Do, uh, Jenny Jenkins, How, Wishing Heart. There's just so many in her catalog and to, that she's still out there. And she's such a, you know, just a philanthropist and such a symbol of all that's right uh, with musicians, with artists out there. And I think that that's a rare thing. So great to catch up with her. Guys, it's been such a pleasure uh, having you join us here on the Music Mania Podcast. We always appreciate you hitting the subscribe button on iTunes or Google Play. Either way you choose to take in the show. Also have a YouTube channel music mania podcast on youtube and our website musicmaniapodcast.com everything is archived right there for you we always appreciate the feedback guys we'll be back next week with another big show things are really rolling in for us here it's time to start heating up it's time to start getting out and seeing some live shows even if it's zero degrees outside 2019 is off and running we've got your back right here on the music mania podcast